South Africa's father of jazz, Hugh Masekela, dies at 78. Uganda gets a new radiation cancer treatment machine, but can it keep up with demand? And sustainable food trends on display in Germany. Africa 54 starts right now. Good evening and welcome. I'm Vincent McCorry. This is Africa 54. Tonight we begin with the hostage situation unfolding in South Sudan. Rebels are holding two Kenyan pilots whose plane crashed in the greater Upper Nile region two weeks ago. The rebels say they will not release the pilots until compensation is paid to the family of a woman killed in that crash. The rebels say the owners of cows killed also want remuneration. They want Kenyan leaders to write an official letter to the head of the country's largest rebel faction, Rick Machar, who will then order the rebels to release the pilots. Machar is the former vice president of South Sudan. He is being held under house arrest in South Africa since 2016. Rebels are also demanding ransom of $200,000. The Kenyan foreign ministry says it's unable to comment. Now, hundreds of Kenyans held a peaceful demonstration at the country's largest public hospital on Tuesday to demand that management act on allegations of rape and sexual harassment of patients. The hospital has denied the allegations, but Kenya's health minister, Cleo Pakilonzi Mailo, has ordered an investigation. Now, human rights activists estimate that more than 500 people responded to a call on social media to demonstrate and present a petition demanding action by Kenyatta National Hospital. More than 30 women who demonstrated claim to have experienced sexual abuse at the hospital and others have given their testimonies on social media. That's according to rights activist Wanjerin Deri. Deru. Activists say nurses at the hospital warn women who are going to breastfeed to travel in groups from the maternity ward to the newborn's nursery two floors away. Now, Egypt's ex-military chief of staff, Sami Anand, is being detained in Cairo. He is reportedly being summoned for questioning by the army over his intention to run for president. Anand's campaign organizers say he's being accused of violating military law but running for office without permission. In a statement read on television, an army spokesperson said Anand's presidential bid was a serious breach of the laws of military service. Anand was the only high-profile challenger to President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi left in that race after a number of other candidates dropped out, some citing intimidation by authorities. Anand's campaign aides say he has now called off his bid for the presidency. The military has declined to comment on reports that Annan has been detained. New Liberian president and former football star George Weir is making a crackdown on corruption his top priority. Weir made the proclamation during his inauguration at a packed sports stadium in Monrovia. Weir also said his administration will be transparent, representing the best interest of all Liberians. We owed our citizen clarity on fundamental issues such as the land beneath their feet, freedom of speech, and how national resources and responsibility are going to be shaped. We have succeeded Alan Johnson Salif, who was uh, constitutionally barred from running again. Salif was credited with shoring up peace, but criticized for failing to tackle graft or do much to lift Liberians out of poverty. We are swearing in is Liberia's first peaceful transition of power in over 70 years.